This is Yahoo Finance Live. We're just a couple of seconds, really, from the opening bell here this morning on this Wednesday. It looks like we're setting up for some strength here when we begin trading as indicated by the futures. Investors have a lot to consider this morning, including what's going on in Washington with the Senate passage of the budget, the Democrats' budget, as well as infrastructure, plus the spreading of the Delta variant. You see there Joby preparing to ring the opening bell. The company going to start trading today after completing a SPAC transaction to go public. What is Joby, you ask? It is an electric air taxi company um, that aims to get to the skies by 2024. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the program. A very excited CEO of that company ringing at the opening bell. We'll show you some cool pictures of their prototype vehicle that's outside of the NYSE today in just a bit. But first, let's talk about what's going on in these markets and how to play them. Omar Aguilar is joining us now, Senior Vice President and Chief Investment Officer of Passive Equity and Multi-Asset Strategies at Charles Schwab Investment Management. Omar, it's good to see you. As I mentioned, there's a lot for investors to sort of consider right now, and not all of that is going in the same direction. We had inflation numbers this morning that were a bit more benign. Um, you have spending still happening, it looks like, in Washington, although it's not all the way past yet, of course. And you have the spreading of the Delta variant that seems to start uh, to be affecting some parts of the economy. What do you look at? How do you weigh all of that when you're assessing the markets right now? Yes, good morning. And uh, definitely uh, not the quiet summer that we used to have. Uh, it's, it's, it's clearly a, a significant amount of information that is going in through everybody's uh, emails and the data is, is coming through. And as you clearly stipulated, there's a lot of um, mixed signals between what the economy is doing, what interest is doing, and is trying to extrapolate what you know officials may do down the road. So I, I will probably summarize it in one word, which is deceleration. If you actually think of all the data that we have received, over the last you know, few weeks, it all points out of, of deceleration of all sorts. Um, the economy is deceleration, the earnings growth is decelerating, the rate of inflation that we just saw this morning is also decelerating. So the, the peak in most of these indicators suggest that going forward, we're gonna continue to see deceleration of the majority of things that we saw until today. You know, um, if, you, if you look at the different pieces of what the inflation data showed this morning, it only shows that while prices continue to increase, their rate of increases has slowed down. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that inflation is not with us and it's not necessarily mean that inflation is not going to stay here for a longer time. It only means that the price increases is just as a slowing pace. I mean, you know, that's obviously a mixed uh, signal for the market. The market seems to have taken it the right way, mostly uh, thinking that this confirms the Fed officials' view that inflation will be transitory and therefore the possibility for those rates to stay lower and for the tapering program to start later this year or earlier next year. So that's a little bit of what's happening at the moment. Um, you know, we should expect more volatility because more mixed signals will continue to happen, as you also pointed out, between the infrastructure bill, between the fiscal stimulus and the ongoing um, uh, announcements of what we see from corporate America, we're going to see the opposite side of that trade. We're going to see those tailwinds coming in, and then we're going to see a lot of mixed information on economy going forward. So Omar, we talked, or you talked a lot there about um, deceleration. We've seen an acceleration though uh, on the tenure. We're looking at 134 there just a week ago. We were about 20 basis points lower. I mean, how do you see that trade shaking out? Are rates going higher, or is this just um, more volatility within a typically uh, typically calmer part of financial markets? Yes, a great question. Uh, I think the, the, you know these deceleration that I mentioned before. You know, you preceded by you know, a complete imbalance of supply and demand in majority of things that we observe. So, and, and I think we should continue to see that imbalance. I would actually probably say that that 10 year yield is catching up. So if you um, saw the, the events of what we saw in the last couple of weeks where the 10 year yield went to really low levels, you know, over the course of the last, um, you know, week or so, you know, we have seen that 10 year yield catching up to a more reasonable levels. It was very 
um, unsettling for majority of investors to see that so you know low levels of bond yields when you actually still see economic growth at a very good pace when you see um, uh, companies doing very well profit margins is still expanding even in the second quarter um, so that that was a little bit of a imbalance between what the bond market was signaling versus what you know the equity markets and the economic data was signaling so we see that continuation of, of that I think it goes back to the question earlier of some of the reasons of why the bond yield went so low also had to do with the Delta variant. I think uh, investors took a step back, you know, trying to understand what the consequences might be for future economic activity as a result of the ongoing growth of the Delta variant. And we're going to see probably more of those. You know, as I said, pockets of volatility should be something that we should get used to, mostly as, you know, schools restart in a few weeks for the majority of, of the parts of this country and then we're going to see a, a potential shift in you know how those uh, delta variant cases will continue to fluctuate and what the responses might be and it seems like the 10-year yield is the place where investors put their risk uh, aversion profile and omar just quickly then put it all together for us what do you do strategically uh, with equities right now well, I would probably uh, separate it into two pieces. Um, you know, the current market and probably the market that we're going to see towards the end of this year, where we're going to see this still a cyclical component of the recovery of the economy as we decelerate and prepare ourselves for the next phase of the economic cycle. That should favor, you know, the typical reopening cyclical behavior that we saw in the last week. I think we continue to see some of that. Clearly, it's going to be up and going and it's going to be volatile, but that's sort of like going to be part of this. Expect, you know, 10-year yields to continue to go higher up, expectations about Fed tapering for, you know, the next few months, as well as just overall, you know, companies that tend to be more in the reopening um, doing very well. However, the secular growth trends for the long term, given the productivity gains, the digital, you know, part of the market and the ongoing growth of what we see continue to be in the next phase of the cycle is something that investors cannot ignore. So companies that tend to be more uh, related to technology or growth will be something that will continue to play into going into next year. So I'll probably say this barbell strategy of staying with your cyclical leaders, but also you know um, have exposure to the secular growth winners that we saw from last year is probably the way that we balance and try to obviously always try to look at your risk profile as the best way to do it. Omar, thanks so much. Good to see you. Omar Aguilar of Charles Schwab Investment Management. Appreciate it. We